Now let's see a microprocessor how it has handled the structural uh, this dependency. So what is structural dependency? When two or more phases want the same resource, they will not be able to run simultaneously. And so the solution, one of the solutions is we are going to you know go for resource duplication. And the other solution is we have to cleverly arrange the stages in such a way that uh, two stages will not ask for a same resource. And you need not by heart this. I have taken just for the sake of uh, you know explaining. This is a microprocessor which is not in the syllabus. <coughs> Don't by heart it, but just try to understand how the various operations are performed in this. It will be helpful for us in uh, problem solving. Okay. So this is actually a microprocessor called MIPS RX series. So all the MIPS RX series will follow the same pipeline in fact whatever pipeline i have taken here is from the microprocessor mips r2000 and r3000 so this is the microprocessor model which has used these phases in the pipeline and they have done it in a very good manner that is why i have taken this the way they have designed it is really uh, very very intelligent way so see this so first of all instruction fetch this is the first phase so here we are going to fetch the instructions and since we are going to fetch the instructions from some memory uh, so they have used the cache so why they have used cache is before we start the executing of the program from main memory uh, the program will be loaded into the cache and from cache uh, no cpu will be accessing it and so either you consider it as a memory or cache it doesn't make any difference in normal sense but one thing you have to understand here is the cache itself is divided into two parts one is d cache and other is i cache i cache means this is the cache in which instructions will be present therefore this phase even though it is going to access the cache it is going to access the instruction part of the cache okay and the next one is rd so rd phase it is mainly responsible for operand loading so this is this is where okay this particular phase is same as what i have shown you in the earlier one in the earlier diagram in the just in the video before it i i to i shown you how instruction fetch is done and it is same as that but then look at the next phase rd operand loading this is operand loading from the register file while decoding the fetch operation so once you uh, fetch the instruction next phase is generally operand you know uh, decoding uh, instruction decoding along with the instruction decoding operand loading is also being done so to understand this you have to even understand the architecture of the microprocessor but since it is not there in the syllabus i'll just make it fast so i'm not going to explain you the exactly how it, the entire uh, all the parts are being present in this uh, uh, microprocessor what you have to understand is we have alu arithmetic logic unit and arithmetic logic unit will be having let's say these two inputs let us call it as input 1 and input 2 and the output is always going to be present in the output register right so this is how it is and apart from it we are going to have a register file right so as a part of the preparation in order to prepare the uh, this uh, this particular operations to happen what this particular uh, microprocessor will do is in this particular phase the register file will contain all the registers from these registers this microprocessor in this phase will be loading the appropriate operands into these two registers so that they will be useful during the execution phase try to understand this so there is uh, there is this instruction and uh, operand cache so let us say this is i cache and this is uh, let us say d cache data cache this data cache d cache will contain data cache and i cache will contain um, uh, these instructions but then we are not loading actually in the earlier example loading has been done from the memory but then here loading is done from the register files into the uh, these registers so that that will be ready for the execution phase now you might get a doubt how will the operands be directly present in the register file even in the beginning of the program execution it it is not like that 
so before this particular instruction which is actually trying to load the operands from register file into these registers there will be another instruction earlier which has already loaded uh, the corresponding operand from the data cache into this particular registers after that is done we are going to do this in fact this particular pipeline falls under the category of risk so in risk architecture i already shown you that there will be load and store instructions right so using the load and store instructions we are going to load from this data cache into this register file and later the other instructions while performing the particular operation they will load the operand from these registers into these registers and now the execution will take place got it so so you can see this cleverly we have avoided that particular load and store okay after after everything i'll explain you again okay now next one is ex data processing using the alu and rf as required so once it is done then this particular execution is going to be done but the result is going to be always present in this output right now ma operand accessing load or store using d cache now see this so this is the actual phase which will be loading whatever you want to load from data cache into the operands into this register file right so you might now wonder how can a op uh, let us say uh, if you have this particular operation like this a equal to b plus c now you will wonder how operands are accessed in a phase after execution isn't it this one is saying that execution is over and after execution we are actually actually accessing the operands using the d cache how is it possible it is not that way so in order for this instruction to happen first we are going to load load b into some register and then load c into some register and then we are going to add r not r1 which means we are going to perform r not r1 and probably the result will be stored in a register r2 and maybe after that store into a r2 so try to understand this one so even though this entire uh, pipeline might look to you as if it is a wrong thing but once you understand that sequence you will be able to uh, appreciate this one okay let me finish it off so what what is happening in this memory access opera operand accessing is being done so what is operand accessing if you want to load something into the registers or store something back into this we are going to do in this phase right so the only phase here which is accessing the uh, data cache is ma earlier two phases for accessing because of which we got some conflict there structural dependency right but by but here those two load and store are actually combined into one got it and the last one is operand storing writing back to register file which means whatever has been done here either the output of this one or whatever has been read from here right so when, whenever you read something from this uh, this particular uh, phase memory access generally the it will come into the memory data register from this memory data register you are supposed to move to the corresponding registers in the register file so that next time it will be moved to that and operations will happen so are you are you able to understand it now let's let's just wind it up what we have seen here first instruction fetch all the instructions will be present in the ic which is nothing but the instruction cache and only phase which will be accessing it will be instruction fetch phase therefore there will be no structural dependency coming to this particular resource which is instruction cache right and the next one is operand loading you might think that operand loading is going to load the operand from here into the registers but that is wrong already whatever operands you you require they are already loaded into the corresponding registers by the previous instructions for example if you are if you are executing this particular instruction which is adding r0 and r1 and storing the result in r2 
before this particular instruction already these two instructions have already been executed which means already they are loaded here so let us say this is or not and this is or one and into or not and or one b and c are already loaded got it therefore now operand loading is nothing but moving these two values into these registers which will act as the input to the alu got it and the next one is execution so execution will be nothing but adding both of them and then storing the output here and the next one is memory memory operand so when you are accessing this one when you are executing this one there is no need of memory access at all if you see this everything is registers but in case if you are doing this load instruction then in this particular phase in this particular phase b will be loaded into r not and c will be loaded into r1 got it when you are executing these two instructions right and what about write back write back will be useful in order to write uh, whatever you have read into the corresponding registers or whatever you have executed into this registers now if you observe this what has mainly happened is earlier there was load here and there was store here and both of them are combined into one phase by making this you know the number of instructions that are required to execute a program might increase but we are able to avoid the structural dependencies now if you have to avoid all the structural dependencies by using uh, you know duplication sometimes what happens is two stages might require alu operation like addition in order to calculate the effective address of an operand in the operand fetching or something then we might have to perform some addition at the same time there will be some other arithmetic operation also in the instru you know happening somewhere which means two phases might require the uh, arithmetic logical unit then in that case what happens is you have to replicate this particular hardware two times so therefore it is going to be costly so in order to eliminate structural dependencies we might have to go with the uh, resource duplication in many many times and it is going to increase the cost if that is there is always a trade off if you want this speed you have to put more uh, more cost into it and the hardware will be able to support parallelism right and this is a beautiful implement is a beautiful implementation where uh, this particular uh, uh, this particular pipeline is followed and it is probably one of the earliest uh, pipelines used and in most of the textbooks i mean most of the questions you will see all these five phases so whenever you see these five phases you have to understand how these five phases are actually implemented then only you will be able to answer certain questions right so just uh, I, i hope you understood this we are going to fetch here we are going to load the operands but then not from the memory from the registers itself we are going to execute it and then we are going to access the memory in case of load and store instructions and here we are going to write back write back is not writing into the memory again it is writing into the register files itself right so if you observe this there are two phases so one phase is here and one phase is here read and write these two are actually accessing the register file at the same time but then there is a provision to do that two phases can access the register file simultaneously register file simultaneously without having any problems okay so in most of the questions in most of the textbooks also you not explain the general purpose pipeline they will be using all these phases this is actually a practical pipeline implemented in this particular uh, architecture and this will be asked in your gate exams also so it has been asked in many in many gate questions we shall solve all those questions later okay hi if you are planning to do masters then doing masters abroad is better than doing masters in india i'll give you all the reasons so first reason is out of 1 lakh students who take gate every year there are only 500 seats in old iits so all the iits put together have a acceptance rate of 0.5% and iit is university is better than iit is they have very good acceptance rate like 30% 40% but all the iit is put together have a acceptance rate of 0.5% and if you are working hard to get into iit bombay iit bombay's ranking is 177 and iit roorkee's ranking is 400 if you are happy to get into iit roorkee then getting into university is better than iit roorkee is easier compared to getting into iit roorkee and looking at the salaries for computer science of uh, for software jobs 
if you have done your masters in computer science in us the salaries are ranging from 80 lakhs per year to 1.2 crore per year so even if you take an average of 1 crore per year your savings will be much higher than the salaries in india after taxes and your cost of living you can easily save 40 to 50 lakhs uh, per year and in india the maximum jobs that you get is around 30 lakhs so your savings will be much greater than the salaries in india and these are all the services that we provide university shortlisting so depending on your profile we will shortlist what are the universities that you have to apply and statement of purpose building and then lor guidance and gre and english test assistance and education loan assistance so you don't have to have any collateral which which means without any security now you can get education loan getting education loan is very simple these days and whatever the amount fee the amount of uh, fee that you have you have a range of uh, universities you can apply for 10 lakh universities 20 lakh universities or 50 lakh universities but whatever it is you are going to get complete education loan and you can pay off your education loan in one year after you getting it after you get a job and then we do visa assistance mock visa interviews and then connecting with the university alumni so now you might ask why we should join game of visas so the answer is we have 90 percent success rate 99 percent success rate and these are all the destinations that we guide the students to so we guide students to any country that you want to go so now it is not just usa we guide to uk germany australia canada so we guide we guide students to all the countries we work with all the destinations and if you are interested in going abroad you have to just drop us a message on this whatsapp number 9494554454 okay thank you